Hello! Welcome to part two of the video for Introduction to Proofs on Functions and Compositions. My name is Professor Michael Polyuk. In this video, we're going to look at some theory related to these things. The first thing we're going to start out with is a very important theorem in math. It's a fundamental result, actually. It shows up in every math course you ever take, so you should look for it. There's four parts to this. The first part is that if you compose any two injections, you'll get an injection, so long as it's defined. The second one is that the composition of two surjections is a surjection. The composition of any two bijections is a bijection. And the fourth one is a secret, and I'll tell it to you later. It's a secret because it's a bit um, distracting. So we're gonna focus on these first three. We're gonna prove two and three, uh, sorry, two and four in this video. The proof of one is very similar to two, and it's a very important exercise. The, the bar for people who um, get a credit for this course is that they're able to prove theorem one in their sleep. Um, if you can do that, then you really understand this course. So I'll leave it for you. Uh, please do it on your own. Let's prove that the composition of any two surjections is, is a surjection. Let f be the function from a to b, and g be a function from b to c, and let them both be surjections. So I've drawn a diagram here where I have f going from a to b, g going from b to c, and then our composition will go from the start here, a, and it'll jump all the way to c. One of the things we'll notice is that drawing diagrams like this really helps our proof. This proof is very short, but without a diagram, it can be very dense. So let's prove that the composition is a surjection. What does that mean? Well, we start with a point in C, and our goal is to find something in A where the composition maps to it. So that's our goal, find an element A in here. Now, how are we going to find that? Well, we're going to use the fact that F and G are surjections. Which will we apply first? Well, since we have this point C in here, and G is the one that reaches it, we'll apply surjectivity of G first. So because G is a surjection, it means that there's some element of B that maps to it. Now what can we apply? Now we apply surjectivity of F. So because little b is inside here, and F reaches everything inside capital B, we know there has to be an element in A. So because f is a surjection, we know that there's some element of a here that maps onto it. Now, do we have an element of a that maps all the way over to c? Yes, in fact, this one will do it. And we know that because g composed with f says, first apply f to a, so you go to b, and then you apply g to it, so then you go to c. So the composition goes from this little a to this c. And now we're done. The proof of injectivity in part one uh, is similar, and you should try it on your own using a diagram. Now we'll get to the secret part four of the theorem about socks and shoes. Consider F to be put on your socks, and consider G to be put on your shoes. So together, you could say that first apply F, then apply G means get your feet dressed, get ready to go out in the world. So our first question is, what's the inverse operation of get feet dressed? How would you describe it to someone if you wanted to, to undo getting your feet dressed? Well, you would take off your shoes, which is G inverse, and then you would take off your socks. That's F inverse. It would be very silly to try to take off your socks while you're still wearing your shoes. So what does this look like in terms of the algebra? Well, if we're first doing this function, this is the one that will be on the rightmost part. This will be closest to the argument. And then the second one will be F inverse. So we can represent it like this. The inverse of get your feet dressed is first take off your shoes and then take off your socks. I'm taking so much time to emphasize this because if you don't think about what's going on here, many students will just quote unquote, distribute the minus one. 
which doesn't make any sense. It'll change the order and it'll be wrong. If you just distribute the minus one, you're telling the person to take off your socks first, after you've taken off your socks, then try to take off your shoes, which doesn't make any sense. So this idea is called the socks and shoes principle. Let's take a look at the diagram. So F goes from A to B and G goes from B to C, and then the composition goes from A to C. So let's write out each of these inverses. Here's the inverse of F, goes this direction. Here's the inverse of G, goes this direction. And then G composed with F, its inverse will go from C all the way to A. So here's G composed with F, inverse. So it really looks like if you're trying to do this, if you're trying to go from here over here, one way to do it would be to do G inverse and then do F inverse, just like we said. If you first tried to apply F inverse, then you'd be stuck, there'd be nowhere to go. Now, the last thing that we need to check is just because it's going from the right place to the right place, why do these two paths actually give you the same thing? So now we need to prove that. So if, a and, if f is a function from a to b, and g is a function from b to c, and they're both bijections, then they're actually, the, the inverse of g composed with f is f inverse composed with g inverse. So these are really equal as functions. Now, what does it mean to prove that two functions are equal? Well, we need to show that they take the same outputs no matter what input you give them. So that's going to be our goal, is to prove that both of these functions are equal. Now, this is a little bit confusing to think about what these two things actually are. So let's write down our idea first. The main idea is that we're going to, in order to compute this thing on the left, we're going to need to compute what is the thing that outputs C. And if you can compute the thing that outputs C, then you know that the G composed with F inverse of C is that thing. So this is going to be the, the what we attempt. It's kind of backwards a little bit. So start with C in C. Now, what can we uh, apply? Uh, what can we plug C into? Well, we can plug C into G inverse. And if you plug C into G inverse, you get something. So let's just call it B. Let's call that the output of G inverse when you plug in C. So then what you know is that when you plug B into G, you get C. Right? That's how inverses relate to the original function. Now, what can you plug B into? Well, you can plug it into F inverse. So when you plug B into F inverse, you get something, let's just call it A. And then because of the way inverses work, if F inverse of B is A, that means that F of A is B. All right, so now remember that our goal was to figure out what, when you plug into G composed with F, what outputs C. Well, let's do it in two different ways. So when you plug in A, you get C because F of A is uh, B and G of that is C. So G composed with F inverse is C. Now let's do it in another way. What happens when you apply G inverse to C? Well, we can see right up here that it should be B. So then it's F inverse of B, and we can see up here that that should output A. So what we've shown is that G composed with F of A, sorry, G composed with F inverse of C and F inverse composed with G inverse of C both give us A, so they're equal. The thing, uh, this can be quite dense. The thing to notice is that in this direction right here, we computed F of A, and then g of that. Here we computed g inverse of something and then f inverse of that thing. When you redo this proof, go through it slowly 
and ask yourself these questions about what do I need? What do I need? What does this tell me? What can I apply? Um, there's only really one direction to go. Finally, let's take some moments to reflect. Does the order in which you compose functions matter? For G composed with F, why do we need that the range of F is a subset of the domain of G? How do socks and shoes relate to inverse functions? Thank you very much and have a great day.